friends and welcome back to Lemon Tree Corner. This week in the studio we are trying a new bag. We are going to make one of those fanny packs. It depends what generation you're from, whether you would call it a fanny pack or a crossbody sling bag. So let's take a look at this pattern. So we are making the Harrelson Belt Bag by Noodle Head. I really like Noodle Head patterns. So we got several different versions we can try. The first one is a front flap with a swivel clasp kind of connector here and a zipper in the back. And then we've also got one with a turn lock and one we can use a snap on. So we've got lots of options there. Um, I would like to do this front one just because this is unique and I've never done this before. So I think we'll be doing that one. Let's take a look at our fabrics. So I have quite a lot of leftovers of this fabric. Then I just made a pouch uh, for my mother-in-law for Christmas one year. So it's this really pretty fabric. And then this kind of has a metallic-y sheen to it. So I'll do those two. And then I was thinking of pairing that with just our natural cork. So I have some cork accents. have some cork accents for the flap and maybe these connector straps. And then... Oh, the side connector pieces are regular fabric, but we also have the D-ring connectors and that kind of thing. So I thought that would be fun, and we can use our rivet press because we're going to be putting in some rivets in this as well. So that's fun. I think that's just a really timely bag. Everybody seems to be wearing those um, across their body. You can still wear it as a fanny pack. And it just seems like an easier pattern. The other one I have has so many options and it has binding again. So we will hold off on that one. We will tackle this easier version <laughs> as we gear up for Thanksgiving. And then I wanted to try and get the piggies in the shop for you for Thanksgiving weekend. What is it? Small Business Saturday. <laughs> so I don't know if I'll have them in there on Saturday, but I'll definitely have them in there hopefully by the 1st of December and I'll send out a special announcement about that. So if you don't follow me on Instagram already, I would love it if you would follow me. Uh, my handle is at Lemon Tree Corner. I post on there when I have a new video and there's a shop update. Sometimes I show you what's in my crochet project bag, that kind of thing, what I'm working on. So I would love it if you would join me over on Instagram. We also have our community tab now here in, in uh, YouTube. So I can type a quick message to you anytime as well. So I'll put that here on YouTube when that's ready as well. So very cool. And we got our advents for Vlogmas. So I am doing Vlogmas this year. Very excited about that. And hope to see you for Vlogmas. A couple of weeks. <laughs> that pretty much starts like the week after Thanksgiving. So that's coming up. I've already done my intro, so I've got a cute little intro for you. And I think that's it, so we should get started. So go ahead and grab yourself a cozy beverage or a water and curl up on the couch, get comfortable, and let's start making this bag. I got my big old, my big old Dutch oven here. We're gonna make this in. And rinse that out too. So I'm cheating because I'm using rotisserie chicken for this. And what else? And then cumin and chili powder. I mean, it's really just all preference. Gonna add in lots of corn. I might not use both of these. And normally I would do diced chilies, but I do have the Hatch chili salsa right now. So I'm gonna just do that to taste. And then we have our onion. Our big old bag of gold potatoes and our carrots and celery. I have new celery, old celery, <laughs> so I just need to test my celery out here. That's pretty crispy. I think these are, oh, those are pretty good too. Um, I think I'm going to use this, well, part of this. I'm going to use the leaves of this because I like having leaves in my soup.
came in the mail. New fabrics. Yay. I don't know if they're all paired together or not. I would have to look on the screen and see which ones I paired together. I went for some Christmas and then a lot of these more muted tones that I was hoping to use with those webbings that we just got. my yarn in the mail look at that it's so cool question is which sweater to start first um, maybe I should experiment on the other sweater since I like this yarn better and I also th I already think that this pattern the cardigan pattern I'm using for this is gonna be better but yeah very excited about getting that in the mail and then we have the thing I haven't been working on so we've got our um, lavender shawl that I've had here and it's one of those things where as I'm working on it it's just not it's not that dramatic and I wanted it to be more dramatic now I've already <laughs> switched to the second color so I've already done quite a lot here. Um, I I kind of just put it away because I wasn't happy. I wasn't happy with how the ends were weaving in. I just got kind of frustrated with how am I supposed to go back and do that. And then this color, the colors just don't change that much. I mean, I guess they get darker. It's just not very dramatic of a color change. So I haven't been happy about that. And then, of course, they come out with this yarn. I'll put a picture in here for you. Now this is more of what I was looking for in the first place. So it's just very frustrating. So I went ahead and bought that yarn <laughs> because of course I did. Um, it's on sale right now, it's 17% off. It's a pre-order. So I really got the five skeins for $100 which is way cheaper than this yarn. So I don't know what I'm gonna do with this yarn. I feel like this would be a good blender. I don't know what my Christmas Advent yarn is gonna look like, but this was something I was thinking until we get to this dark color, but this color, you could totally blend with something. It's just a nice neutral and this one too. And this one, so like the first three are pretty neutral. Uh, I just feel like when you get into these two, that might not work. But I don't know what colors I'm going to get in that advent. Um, I know they're autumn themed, but it might blend well with this, in which case I can make a blanket or a shawl and I can like either stripe it with this or hold two together to make it thicker. We'll see what happens, but I'm going to wind up tearing this apart, I think. Um, I'll, I'll let this sit here until I get the other yarn, and then we'll see what to do. But I really love this pattern. I just feel like for this amount of work, and I really have to concentrate and count, um, so I feel like for this amount of work and blending the colors, I mean, I can barely see that color change. Can you see that color change? <laughs>
like a river in the dark You stand me right, you lit the spark And I can feel you tearing down every wall finished magic lessons it was very good I am I think they should make a series out of that it's a really good book um, so now I'm on to ghost stories this is Stephen Fry just telling ghost stories or reading ghost stories like Edgar Allan Poe and things like that so it sounded very interesting Stephen Fry is mostly a comedic actor sometimes a serious actor but he also narrated the books uh, the Harry Potter books, if you do the British editions of the Harry Potter books. I think Jim Dale narrated the American version of the books. Those are the ones I listen to. But Stephen Fry just has a very wonderful voice to listen to as a narrator. So, very excited to listen to this as we do this project. Welcome, brave listener, to this <laughs> spine-chilling collection of haunting Pull up a chair, draw near the fire, and I will tell you some truly terrifying tales of ghosts and ghouls, spirits and phantasms, spectres and apparitions. Perhaps in the dead of night, you've sensed their presence. Maybe you felt a shiver on the back of your neck, or you've seen the shadowy and fleeting image of someone you know to be no longer amongst the living. Hey friends, this week's Coffee of the Week sponsor comes to us courtesy of Kathy. Uh, when Kathy donated her $12 for a yard of fabric, she said she's glad she found my channel. Uh, she's a new bag maker and watching my channel gives her the confidence to make more bags. So thank you very much, Kathy. I really appreciate it and I'm glad that I can help you feel confident and seeing my process can help you as a new bag maker. So thank you very much. And if any of you would like to donate to my coffee fund, I'll put it right here. It's, um, it's www.coffeeko-fi.com and it's a special site where you can make a donation to my channel. Uh, obviously watching the channel is more than enough, but if you would like to subscribe or donate a coffee, yard of fabric, skein of yarn, whatever you feel comfortable doing, I would love it. And if you do, I will shout you out in my next video. So thank you very much, Kathy, and I hope you enjoy this week's video. Well, those nails did not <laughs> last much longer. Um, I was going to put on special nails for Thanksgiving, and I actually bought like some really nice kind of burnt orange sparkly nails. But after making that soup, I'm thinking, oh, that's probably not the greatest idea for that um, because we've, we've got all that chopping to do, so I don't think that's gonna work very well. So unlike everything else where we normally do double two pieces of the fabric, we're only doing one. So I wanna make sure I'm not cutting two pieces here I'm just cutting one you must have been sent just for me come one come all just when I need you you said sail and navigate but when I need you you lift me up so we levitate you're Okay, so I did find a tutorial for this, which is a step-by-step. -step. Um, I'll link them below. There's a part one and a part two. And she even goes over the different closure types that you can pick from. Um, so it's a very, very good video. I'm glad I watched that first because this bag comes together a little differently than your normal pouch, you know. So I'm looking at these instructions, and they want two woven interfacing. So they want one, one SF-101 piece that's the entire size and one that's to the dotted line. 
And because they're suggesting a canvas or a, you know, a thicker material here for the exterior, then I have, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the SF-101 and Decoville to this line. So I'm going to do the Decoville um, and not have it in the seam allowance. I think that's just going to add some extra oomph to my exterior pieces. Anything that's going to go with the um, cork, I don't need to worry about. There's cork on this and cork on this. That's going to be plenty thick. Through the fields of young romance And under blue skies with an open glance We head over hills filled with dreams Interesting. The whole idea here is that it's going to curve, so this this whole panel is going to stick out a little bit more than the rest of it. So we just want to make sure this bottom lines up. It's the same width, and it is. So this corner lined up to our lining panel here, and just go all the way up as if it was not curved, as if 
it is a straight edge. So that's a reason to it all. Before you sell all that you've got, be sure to call. And that's the way you're allowed to feel. Very cool. So that's what that looks like. It just kind of pops out there. Yeah, we're just gonna baste it on these three sides. This is a very unique way to construct a bag. It's very interesting. And then we've got our back and we've got this big bulge, which I'm just gonna kinda flatten a little bit. Um, we did put our Decoville in there, so that's gonna keep its shape really well. Maybe a little too well. And then I just had to mark where the pivot points are. So, we're gonna, I don't know which way to sew this on top. I guess I should sew it here. So we're gonna mark where these pivot points are, just so that when we get in there, we don't forget. And a better idea is to go all the way across from one to the other. to make sure that they line up. It's just a very interesting project. I haven't had one like this in so long. Okay, so now we are gonna put the two bulky pieces together and we're gonna leave our opening in the flap here. Now she said what I could do is leave the opening all the way across if I have a thicker material. I'm just worried about that. <laughs> I'm worried because the cork isn't gonna, I can't press it down. So I'm just really worried that that's not gonna work out in my favor. And then we've got some very thick corners going on here as well. Okay, this is so thick now, I'm starting to question myself. Those corners were already thick. The good news is, is that I did cut down the decoville so that it's not as crazy. <laughs> it's, it's not in the seams, but it's just so thick. I'm going to cut away some of this oh, bulk. I double, double stitched all the seams as usual. out. Yeah, see that added a lot of extra bulk and then where this overlaps added a lot of bulk as well. So, and I wasn't clear, I mean I know I watched the video but I wasn't clear right there how far up I was supposed to put this. Um, so it is in the seam but I think that was correct. <laughs> I don't remember. So we're gonna have to top stitch this without pressing. And then, yeah, I'm gonna have to put that in. Oh, that was kind of easier than I thought it was gonna be. If that's correct. I think that's gonna look cleaner than if I had tried to sew it earlier. Okay. Okay, last step is attaching and riveting the last piece in place. So, she wants us to mark it, but I don't understand why we're not just going through both pieces. We'll follow instructions. Okay. So three eighths of an inch down from the top.
sat there alone on the highway. And now we're going to kind of sandwich that there as tight as possible. And then we're going to do our markings again. So see how that just barely comes out there. Ah, I moved it. I moved it. So we just want that to barely hang out there. Where's my center mark? It's nice when I get to use my rivet press. Um, rivets just add a nice touch and for some reason I don't think about them very often. Okay, so the trick is going to be getting all these holes lined up. Getting this one. One eternity later. Back here, and that's too tight. See, I had a feeling that was too tight. It's just too far up. Hmm. It was the wrong hole. So, in order to have this one be in this hole, we're going to be too tight for this here. we go with that. All done. So when you close it, it goes like that. Which is very cool. I'm going to have to iron this out a little bit. And then I'll put our strap on it. cute and fashionable and it's gender neutral obviously if I would if I would pick a non you know I would pick a gender neutral fabric then it would be gender neutral I do think of that when I'm at craft fairs everything I do is so girly I don't really have anything for a guy or a gender fluid person to buy so that's super cute and it was a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be for some reason I was scared of this whole thing the construction just seemed really crazy I do like the seatbelt webbing um, I'll put it over I'll put it over my chest when we get to the outro but not my favorite way to wear things so I won't personally be using this, which is probably why it took me so long to make one of these, is because it's not something I'm going to wear, but it is something a lot of people are into right now. And it didn't take that much fabric, so let's see what our fabric requirements were. Yeah, half a yard, fat quarter or a quarter of a yard. And then, yeah, if we use the webbing instead of making the strap out of the fabric, I could totally make this with fat quarters or <clears throat> a half a yard left over from something else. Um, I do like theirs. This is like a, a canvas. The canvas I have right now is all like super big Hawaiian prints, so that's not going to work for me. But I'm going to give this pattern an A. It was actually not that difficult, even with the things I did to it. So, yeah, I'm very glad I did that one. 320, and this was super fast, it looks like. 130, 230. So, what is that? 110 minutes. This only took me four hours to make. This was faster than like any other bag including the Maya wristlet, um, that's very cool, which means I can totally sell this for like, like under 30 maybe, maybe 36, hmm, it is very stylish, I think I could do 32, 36, we shall see, it's super cute, and then it's got the back pocket, 
which easily fits your phone. It's just a really good size. And I like the little flaps. I like that I made them out of the cork because it ties these in together. But if I had a different fabric, then this would stand out if I did that in a different fabric. So, wow, <laughs> this is definitely going in my product line. Um, yeah, I'll have to find some more neutral fabrics to go with this because I think this would be a big seller in neutral fabrics. Ah, it's nice to have a win after a couple weeks of not having a win. <laughs> Friends, thanks for joining me this week. Let's take a look at our bag. Yay, it's so super stinking cute. I just love it. It's got the zipper pouch on the uh, zipper pocket on the back with our new square pull. Very cute. And then it goes over your body like this. So you just got a nice little flap. Um, you could tell why I don't wear these bags. <laughs> I got the big girls, so <laughs> I tend not to wear these types of bags. So I leave these kind of bags to the people who can actually wear crossbody bags. <laughs> but it's very cool. And even when you have it over, so I made the strap longer, she, as she suggested, for larger people. And then you've just got this little swivel clasp that you can open. You can get stuff out without taking it off, which is nice. And then you can also just like stick your phone in the back pocket without taking it off. So very useful and versatile. And it came together super easy and quick. So this is a big win for me this week especially after the month that I've had. So very excited to make more of these bags. Um, you saw the fabric that just came in. So we're gonna be making more of these bags and I have to go through, make project sheets for all that fabric and then figure out what we're doing with all that fabric. So that'll be fun. And then next week, it is Vlogmas. So we're gonna move into Vlogmas next week um share with you the advent calendars that we're going to be doing and yeah just lots of fun stuff i'm not going to be releasing a video every day it'll be every couple of days uh, at least two videos a week if not three so go ahead and hit the notifications bell to uh find out every time i drop one of these vlogmas videos <laughs> so i hope you join me for a vlogmas and i hope you have a happy thanksgiving if you celebrate that and I'm going to see you back here next week. Have a wonderful week, everyone. Love you. Bye. And I was much too old to act on a feeling. But then again, I ain't never had someone to hold. I wrote songs for a blackie.